talker. Yes. Good morning, and welcome to Lenten services at First Presbyterian Church. So nice to see all of you here today. In fact, I think our numbers keep growing every Sunday uh, here live at church, and it's so nice to see all of you. And it's also nice to see we have some visitors here today. We welcome you. Uh, we hope you enjoy your, uh, the services here today, and uh, welcome back anytime. Uh, I have a few announcements. Uh, first, I want to say that I'm a little disappointed that spring has given us a cold shoulder this morning. It's not really what you're looking for for the first Sunday in spring, but it is what it is. So today we have uh, the beautiful arrangement presented here today, the glory of God and the loving memory of Tom Johnson by Julie Jo, Jennifer, and the grandchildren, Jill also. Uh, Liturgists are needed April the 3rd and April the 24th, and it's not hard to do this. In fact, uh, Jill will prepare the, the commentary for you if you don't want to do it yourself, uh, but uh, we're, we're having a little trouble getting folks to volunteer this year, so please, please uh, come forward if you're interested in uh, liturgy on those two Sundays. Uh, the Lenten uh, lunches continue on Wednesdays uh, down in Westminster Hall. It's uh, 12 o'clock, and this week it will be uh, Pastor Steve Dixon, uh, and his message will be Jesus, Love of My Soul. And this year, all of the uh, lunches are centered around popular uh, uh, hymns. And, of course, we love hymnology here. We've had a couple of services where we've talked about the history of hymns and psalms. So they're interesting presentations. So if you're looking for something to do on Wednesday at lunch, come see us. Um, choir practices will continue as usual. Uh, the Easter flower orders are due today. If you don't have a slip, there's more of them in the back or by the uh, 5th Street door. Uh, Presbytery will be held Tuesday the 29th at 6 p.m. at the East Kish Presbyterian Church in Reedsville. Uh, the Senior Choir will present the Easter Cantata, Wondrous Love, on Sunday, April 17th at 10.30 uh, here in the church. Uh, are there any other announcements that somebody has or we've missed? Okay, we have a minute uh, for mission today uh, from Elo. And good morning again. Good morning. <laughs> um, in your bulletin, today you found a brochure and an envelope. You know what that means, right? <laughs> the Minute for Mission addresses our first special offering of the four, which we have during the year. We call it One Great Hour of Sharing. And you find that brochure in there and your envelope. And the envelopes with your share of money will be collected Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. You can just drop them into the collection plate. We will have extra envelopes and brochures in the vestibule and on Fifth Street. And so people who are still going on the YouTube, they can pick them up in the church or next, next Sunday, in the announcement, we'll have a number, an internet number, where you can actually donate to, to the Great Hour of Sharing. Each of your gifts will help to improve the lives of suffering people, be it because of a disaster, or because lack of enough food, or by not having means to develop skills in husbandry or farming. And that's what our envelope will help to do. And we sometimes do that with alternative gifts too. Um, I have here a prayer. I want to lead you in one to her prayer. Thank you, God, for connecting us. Thank you for neighbors each with needs and gifts to share, and for our church, the whole church, 
together and for Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship.
another generation of musicians at First Presbyterian. Please join me in the opening sentences. If we but suffer God to guide us, and hope we can to all our ways, He'll give us strength, whate'er betides, and bear us through all evil days. Who trusts in God's unchanging love, builds on a rock that none can move. Join me in the prayer of adoration. Loving Lord, we gather today here and across our homes to worship and adore you and to refocus our lives on the eternal. May heaven have definable features for us as we dwell here below. May we long to be permanently in your presence, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. From the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain. Prophets and priests alike all practice deceit. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. Let us approach the throne of God with our prayers of confession. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride and the temptations of this world. We see ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. We have failed in love, refused to forgive, neglected justice, not obeyed your word, 
and ignored your truth. Have mercy, O God, and forgive our sins. Return us to paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now a time for personal confession and reflection. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. In three short weeks, we will celebrate. But that victory is not yet in sight as Jesus nears the deathly darkness of Good Friday, alone, so alone. The disciples did not understand what was happening. Jesus tried to teach them, to explain to them, to prepare them, Jesus knew what was already unfolding and began to say goodbye. He said goodbye by taking a basin and a towel and washing all their feet, even Peter's feet, even Judas' feet. And he said, I give you an example that you also should do as I did to you. But they didn't understand. No one understood what was happening. Jesus was all alone. From the cross, he felt so alone. He cried out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why have you left me alone? The first New Testament reading today is from uh, the book of John, chapter 6, verses 50 to 53. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give you for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Thank you for this reading from your holy word. Thank you. 
and watch us where we go. Then help us to be wise in times when we don't know.
back to him. Okay, there we go. Everybody's got that. Now, I have a question. If you eat all of these jelly beans, will you be full? No. No. <laughs> no. It's temporary, isn't it? They taste good, but they don't really nourish us, which means make us strong, make us grow strong. No. And even bread or fruit or any of those, eventually we get hungry again, right? There is one thing that nourishes us forever. Do you know what that might be? What? Hmm? What'd you say? It's Jesus. Jesus did communion, the grape juice and the bread, so that we would always know that with him, we can have what we need for the day, for the journey, for whatever we need, Jesus is there. What do you have to do to have Jesus there for you? Do you know? Nothing, Nothing as far as earning it, but you do need to say, Jesus, I love you. Can you do that? Can we say that together? Yeah, I love you. Jesus, I love, I love you. you. Yeah. And when he hears that, he is always with you. And even when you don't say it, He's always with you. He will not let you be hungry in that way because he's there and he'll always take care of you. Gracious and loving Father, for these precious, precious children of God, for the beautiful music they played and for the ways in which you love them and keep them full of what really matters in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you. Yeah, there's a story on there you could read. It's on. <laughs> I invite you now to hear the word of God as it comes to us from the Gospel of John. This is continued verses to what Paul had already read. The chapter 6, beginning with the 54th verse. Whoever eats of my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I remain in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and eventually died. But whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The reading ends the 59th verse of the sixth chapter. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O loving Father, may the words of my mouth and all of our hearts be acceptable, for you, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today we continue our study on the various facets of communion. Nourishment is the subject for today. Dale Bruner is one of my favorite modern theologians. He spoke at many of the Wee Kirk conferences when I was on the planning team. And he wrote a very good commentary on the Gospel of John. He makes an observation that I think really fits with nourishment. He says all the time on the radio or on TV or some surveys, people are asked what their favorite restaurant, what their favorite food is. He says, 
What's really sad is no one ever lists, lists the church. No one ever says communion. For in a very real way, that is our favorite food. And it is what will nourish us for all time. We all look for fullness. Pascal said we have a God-shaped hole in our hearts and we spend most of our lives stuffing the wrong things into that. And only Jesus fits perfectly. We look in all the wrong places for satisfaction. We find our identity in what we do in our careers. We have a sense of self-worth by making good grades, by getting degrees, by going to a trade school, and even by our physical appearance, how we look. But if we are looking for immortality, we may also turn to something that's not Jesus first. We may be looking for a doctor to give us meds. I had a laugh when I had my last um, colonoscopy. The nurse that was doing the check-in, she looked at the list of medicines that I take, and she said something that sort of stunned me. She said, you ought to have stock in the pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, but the truth is we look to that to keep us well, to make us well, to keep us out of pain. And none of those things are bad. They are good, and they're from the hand of God. But our focus usually is not on Jesus. And what we focus on does not have lasting effects and leaves us desperate for more. In many cases, Jesus says, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. And later he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of me will never hunger. Whoever drinks this wine will never thirst. These words are so powerful. It's such a very small thing to take a little cube of bread, a little cup of juice, and realize that it is what sustains us. It is what goes in that God-shaped hole in our heart. Jesus wanted his disciples and us to understand that the Lord's Supper is a spiritual supper because Christ is in heaven, the Holy Spirit lifts us up to Jesus. And that is such a powerful, powerful image because he truly is with us as we eat the bread and drink the cup and are nourished by Jesus. John Calvin, my favorite from the old world, he says bread nourishes and sustains, it keeps life in our bodies. So Christ's body is the only food to enliven and invigorate our soul. And remember, we are souls, that's what we are. We must reflect on the benefits which wine imparts to the body and realize that the same are spiritually imparted to us in Christ's blood. These benefits are to nourish, refresh, strengthen, and gladden. That's what it's all about. That's who Jesus is for us. In a very real way, I like to think of communion when we talk about nourishment as food for the journey. That is what we need. We are in a Lenten journey right now, but we're also individually in the journey of each of our lives. Communion in Christ is bread for the journey. Some of you may remember Cheryl Crow's song in the 90s, and she does happen to be a Presbyterian. She said, every day is a winding road. And it's very true. We never know what's coming up next in our lives. We have no idea. But if we worship and study scripture, and most especially, if we take this sacrament, then we have food 
for the journey, food for that winding road. There are so many right now in our world that are so desperate, so in need. Many are hungry, many are thirsty, but even more are spiritually saw. We see the pictures of the people in Ukraine and we see them worshiping in tunnels, in subways, anywhere they can get underground to escape the bombs, they're down there. And I've seen communion in several of those settings. I remember one of the first years I was here, we had one of those major snowstorms, deep snowstorms, and it shut down I-70, the turnpike. And I remember there was a school bus in all the backed up car traffic full of Catholic children and their priest. Well, the boys got out there and built an altar out of snow. And the priest served communion. What a wonderful image for how we need Christ's nourishment for the journey. So, so important. In the midst of this horrible war, as we see them continue to worship and praise God, they don't know what's coming. They don't know if they'll be alive the next day. They don't know if their families are all right. They don't know if their beloved country will survive. There's so many things that they need right now, but only one can give them true nourishment. Only one can give them true comfort. Now, you might think that because we haven't had communion in the last two Sundays that, well, maybe we're not being nourished every day. We talked about remembering last week. And one of the beautiful things about communion is we take it over and over and over again. Baptism, just once. But the work of the Spirit is embodied in nourishing us at the communion table. And this is so very powerful because Jesus does feed our soul. Jesus does feed us in such a way that we are whole. I remember years ago hearing a woman ask a man if he remembered what his wife cooked two weeks ago. <laughs> and it was funny, because he was kind of going, hmm. <laughs> but then he looked at her and he said, you know, I don't remember what she fed me two weeks ago, but for 40 years, she has fed me, and I have been nourished and loved. I think in a very real way, as we look at communion and we see the chalice and the bread and grapes on the table each week, we can think back and know we've taken communion many, many times in our lives. Kids are just getting started. All of that together means that Jesus has nourished us. Jesus has given what we need to fill that heart-shaped blank that Pascal talked about. It is Jesus' place in each and every one of us. We take communion to be nourished for the journey. We eat the bread, we drink the cup. Israel ate manna in the wilderness, but they died. Because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, when we drink and eat at this table, we are drinking and eating to eternal life. The gift of Christ for each and every one of us. I would hope, for myself included, that every time we take communion, we will cherish that experience and be fed by it in ways that transform and last us no matter what is happening around us. Amen.
We have heard the word read and interpreted. Now, let us stand and say what we believe as Christians. Today we'll be reading from the Heidelberg Catechism of 1563, question 75. How art thou admonished and assured in the Lord's Supper that thou art a partaker of that one sacrifice of Christ accomplished on the cross and all, all his benefits? That Thus, and, me and all believers to eat of this broken bread and to drink of this cup in remembrance of him, adding these promises first that his body was offered and broken on the cross for me, and his blood shed for me, as certainly as I see with my eyes the bread of the Lord broken for me, and the cup communicated to me, and further that he feeds and nourishes my soul to everlasting life with his crucified body and shed blood as assuredly as I receive from the hands of the minister to taste with my mouth the bread and cup of the Lord as certain signs of the body and blood of Christ. In our joys and concerns today, we start with Michelle Lynn. She was told nothing more could be done for her cancer. She went elsewhere and is starting a new treatment. This is a college friend of Joe Reed. So we need to hold Michelle and this new treatment in our prayers. Kevin Hahn, throat cancer. Family and friends of Haney or Hammy Jr. and Ann Dillon. 
and another for Kevin Hall. We also need to continue to pray for those that are listed on the back of our bulletin. We want to also pray for the people of Ukraine, the neighboring countries that have stepped up to be Christ to them, for our president, our nation, NATO, and yes, even Putin, maybe especially Putin. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh, loving Father, you have given us Jesus Christ, your expression of yourself that we can relate to, that we can understand, and he has given us a way of being nourished by him, by his presence in us, and by the love that he gives us, and we thank you. The world is hurting right now, and you must also be hurting, O oh Lord. As we lift up people with cancer, folks that are grieving in our own community, we also know that you have children of God everywhere on this planet, and that your eyes are also focused on Ukraine, and also seeing the loving acts of people driving all across Europe to pick up a family and take them home. Lord, you inspire us to be those kind of people. Help us in the coming days and weeks to find ways of being living reminders of you because we have been nourished by you. And now, O oh Lord, we ask that you would hear us as we pray what you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. continues as we bring before God our tithes, our offerings, and most especially, we bring ourselves. <laughs> Thank you. 
Most gracious and loving Father, accept these gifts and our very lives that all might be used in service to bring the gospel and your love to everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. to remember what it is to be God's people. We are loved. We are forgiven. We have been nourished by Christ. Let us go into the world this week seeking to find ways that we can serve. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon each of us and abide in our hearts both now and forevermore. Amen.